Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So once again, we want to thank everybody that's supporting us over on Patreon. I invite everybody, uh, if you feel so inclined, you can follow us on Patreon. And for as little as $1 a month, actually even less, if you, get a, if you do pay in advance, you get a 10% discount. So for $10.80, unique videos all year long. And, you know, we're going to start over here just talking about population. And then we're going to go off in what seems like very, very uh, different areas. Um, you know, there are some numbers that are coming out that are showing there's been an awful lot of trouble conceiving amongst humans at this point in time. And uh, that's just Rama snapping bones in the background. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. excuse us for that. Yes, between uh, fertility rates and, and massive decline, life expectancy, massive decline, uh, the number of women having miscarriages through the roof, it would appear that Homo sapiens sapiens maybe is going to be one of those extinct branches on, on the hominid uh, family tree, uh, so to speak. And we've covered that many times, uh, and I understand people are always coming and going, but there have been many different humanoid species upon the earth, and, and in fact, dozens that we know about, yet there's many, many more that we don't know about, and there's a lot of things that are confused and just don't seem to make sense. I think, again, when you look into the myths of the world, look into the global myths. You'll start to see patterns. You'll see these myths tend to be universal. Everybody's got the same legends. They come back time and time again, and, and they could be confusing. But the myths, I think, give us a real glimpse into the true reality on this planet. Let's, I, I want to listen to um, this one minute and 34 seconds of Tucker's speech here because it rang a bell with uh, Cindy. And if you guys have been following us uh, for a very long time, then you know that we said uh, years ago that there was a treaty that comes up in 2025, a, a galactic, intergalactic treaty. And we should probably say that treaty might be uh, extending into the inner earth civilizations uh, as well as civilizations from off planet dealing with this planet. See, this is the big reveal. The big reveal is, uh, you know, we're, we've never been alone. We've never, ever, ever been alone. And we are just a small piece in this big, huge, huge puzzle out there i mean we're, we're just one tiny little piece and when i say that i mean the earth and humanity but as above so below when you see all the migrants uh moving from one place to another think of that in a galactic sense think about that with people moving from planet to planet because this war that's going on has engulfed and destroyed planets, entire planets. And in fact, you're standing on the remnants of a planet that was destroyed by this war. And that is in our history. And how do we know these things? Again, um, with us, our information first and foremost comes from ourselves through our guides. So we utilize Cindy's ability to go into trance and, and lately she hasn't really gone into full trance. It's been messages that have been coming through that she's communicating to our guides with uh, while she is awake. And so we've done both and we had thousands of hours uh, of full trance material that we've pulled from throughout the years as well as uh, messages that have come through the, gu the guides. And then with me, it's, it's more of um, visions that I've seen throughout the years but haven't really understood till we get to these times where everything seems to be piecing together. Now, Cindy hasn't been an avid historian. She's been um, one that's more um, away from 
all the books and academia where I have been a nonstop uh, avid historian uh, for, uh, let's say, 53 of my 58 years. I mean, since I could first start to read, I was digging into books. So I have gone the route of reading and gobbling up everything I possibly could as well as going within. So we will share this. A fair amount of evidence that they're not aliens. They've always been here. Um, and, I, and I do think it's spiritual. That's, that's my view. So, and, and again, it's not provable, but based on, uh, on the evidence, I think. I'm with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, if the U.S. government has, in fact, had contact, direct contact with these beings, whatever they are, I've already told you what I think they are, and has entered into some sort of agreement with them, which is, which is the claim of, of informed people, um, I would say, whether they're right or wrong, I can't say conclusively. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but, if that is true, I mean, it's a very, very, very heavy thing. Yeah. Are you, well, a, a lot of people say well, different dimensional I, beings. But I, I want to ask, are, you, are you angels and demons, or how would you well, describe these, these beings? You know, I, these are, again, I'm getting into the realm of conjecture, so I just want to say that flat out. Entity. But one thing I know for a dead certain fact, having seen it, is that um, there is good and evil. We are being acted upon at all times. And I think every person can feel that in himself. I mean, there are moments when you are moved to do things that are much better than you actually are, and they're also more evil and destructive than you actually are. You are subject to forces from outside yourself. That is absolutely true. Now, we can argue about what they are, but every person in the room, if he's reflective, will tell you, yes, I know what you're talking about. And so there are forces that are not human, that do exist in a spiritual realm of some kind, that we cannot see, and that when you think about it, sort of make you think we live in an ant farm. Yeah. <laughs> Being, right? And that's Absolutely. just, that is real. Yeah. Okay. When I, and there's many. So that was a, a, a big, open. It's my personal belief based on. Clear discussion as it's, it's going on its own. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, Tucker thinks it's spiritual. He doesn't think they're aliens, but then by the very definition of, of aliens, you know, it would be something that's not from here. So he thinks they've been here all along, which, uh, yes, there are species that have been here all along. And we've talked openly among, uh, about some of them, like the Nagas have been here before, um, humans were here and the Nagas are these mythological uh, serpentine humanoid beings that live inside the earth and sometimes under the sea as well that did interact with humans uh, more openly at certain times and you know again we have had had numerous as have so many of you and many people just don't want to talk about you know experience they, experiences they've had because they don't want to be looked at like they're crazy and that is what society does because they don't want you knowing yes you are on a human ant farm so to speak you are in a, a, an aquarium and being watched so to speak this is the reality that we've had there are inner earth beings there are beings living under the oceans uh, there's like a new Aquaman movie coming out. This is why they are giving us this disclosure uh, at this point in time. And it seems to be speeding up very rapidly and will shake many people uh, to the absolute core because their whole belief system will be, you know, found to be incorrect. Yet, why are they doing this now? It, it's because there's, again, a war on and this war is unpredictable. And there are certain treaties that do come up at certain key points in time. And, and the Earth Year 2025 that we talked about with those DEA, GEL numbers, when we first got information about it, we got that that was kind of a warning from the control system saying, this is what we will do if we don't get our demands met, so to speak. You know, in other words, threatening the humanoid population on the planet because they've done that in the past. And then there are those out there that, that want to support humanity and let humanity awaken to the fact that they are uh, not alone. In fact, have been manipulated the whole time by uh, different forces that are not Homo sapiens sapiens and and kind of join the cosmic club so to speak with the awakening that you know this is uh, a much much bigger picture than has been painted mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and with this statement here, it definitely, definitely perked my ears because that treaty that did come through through trance was going to be up in 2025. And one of Tucker Carlson's main, main jobs is to help control that information output. And, you know, he's also to play the other side of the pendulum because, you know, he's the other reason why this info, this, this, this momentum that we have that's moving toward a all a huge control type of energy you know he plays the other part of it you know I, I what he says he has a lot of people wrapped around his pinky because what he says is so so true but that's that's his part he's just playing his part to keep the momentum to keep the pendulum swinging with the controllers so uh, you know that treaty up in 2025 i've often wondered because i'm not allowed that information i'm not um, allowed to hear exactly what is this treaty what is it for but when i do hear the truth there is some sort of magnetic energy inside of me that can feel it like rumbles and it moves toward that truth um, so this is what we have going on. Uh, there is going to be some type of open, open uh, disclosure. And, you know, to have humans primed for that is so, so important uh, for the controllers to get what they want. Um, and, and, you know, by that very name, controllers, that's the most important thing to them is to control our psyche, is to control our hearts, is to control our energy. Uh, because without that control, they have nothing. And they know that. And, and that's very, very threatening to them. So we'll have to see what happens. And in, in the meantime, you know, we watch what's going on on this side over here. And we move forward doing what we need to do to make sure we're not caught in that in that widespread net that they are casting for so many. Yeah, again, they're always getting us to take that either or approach. You know, which is it? Is it A or B? Are you a Democrat or Republican? Are you a capitalist? Are you a communist? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, whatever it is. But the reality is there, there is an all of the above box. <laughs> and so are we facing aliens? Uh, well, if you're going to go by the definition that are there beings here? that are not from here that are controlling us externally yes there are aliens um, but there are also again inner earth beings there are beings that are living under the oceans uh, there are beings that are on other densities but on earth and so <clears throat> it's truly all of the above is going on here and we had a much clearer vision of this in the past and we had open interaction with them in the past and just like they would constantly say and are saying to this day to our faces that there's no evidence for this and no evidence for that. And yet we're saying, well, what about this? What about that? Uh, I, I watched a video of people, you know, bringing in boxes from cars for things for people to count. I watched people pushing things away and destroying things that people count when it comes to selecting um, Proxima El Presidente trying to disturb the, U the AI there. Yeah, I mean, there's, oh, there is absolutely no evidence for this, that, and the other thing, whatever it is, whether it's, it's cures for plagues upon the land, whether it's the selection process, you know, they'll just say there's no evidence. But the reality is there's evidence everywhere. And there's even more evidence for non-humanoid beings on the planet. The evidence for non-humanoid beings on the planet is just simply overwhelming. And there are so many channels out there that have covered it. Our, um, was it our, our beloved Mary, Mary D. Hi, Mary. Uh, she was saying, I, th I think it was Mary D. Uh, my memory goes now. This is a guy approaching this, this sixth uh, decade of life. So... But anyway, saying that, never watch Billy Car Carson, right? Carson? Yeah, Billy Carson. Yeah. Uh, and he's done a great job for like a decade. He's been on Gaia. He's been on so many others. And yes, Gaia is part of this process, in my opinion. Uh, when you see channels, again, we've as we've mentioned, that um, have millions and millions or 
or billions of, of views. Somebody else was mentioning uh, Redacted covering things. And, and Redacted, I looked at Social Blade. They, they have half a billion uh, views. So obviously they've, they've reached a lot of people. This is all disclosure because our world is about to completely change, completely change. <clears throat> and it's going to be uh, it's going to be terrifying for a lot of people to recognize uh, the type of technology and beings that are all around us. And so does that mean there's no such thing as demons or angels? No, it's again, it's it's that all of the above box. There are angels that are helping us every single day from the higher d densities. There are angels always all around us. And these, what we could really say, well, what is an angel? Well, again, it, it's a non-embodied being that is looking to help the original purpose of the creator, right? And, and I think most people would agree with that definition, a non-embodied being serving creator, right? Because yeah, there is a creator of this, this universe and the original matrix that we're in. Absolutely. The, the, the distortion is... Uh, when we start getting down to some very, very uh, common names that this being is called, well, that's not it. Uh, yeah, that, that's one of the controllers basically placing themselves uh, in the position of that supreme being and thus taking the energy that's be trying to be get directed to the supreme being and utilizing it for themselves because they do do that. And yet, absolutely, there are demons. In, in my mind, uh, a true demon is more of a thought form. It's a parasitic thought form that is created by a being that actually does have a soul, so to speak, uh, has source in them, and, and is created for dark, nefarious purposes, sometimes absolutely intentional, and other times not intentional, uh, just created as a byproduct of the fact that we are all co-creators here. We are, we are in training. The, this is training. You're in training camp. And so, yeah, well, what's the ultimate purpose? I go all the way back to being like 16, 17 in Bible study and saying to uh, the guy that was leading the Bible study, so what's the ultimate purpose here? Well, uh, he thought, he said, I guess we're all trying to be more like, uh, you know, Christ. And we're all trying to awaken that Christ within. Boy, that sounds a little new agey. But that was from somebody that was strictly fundamentalist. And, and when he thought about it logically, yeah, we're becoming co-creators with Christ. Uh, yes, <laughs> bingo. We're, we're to exemplify uh, the, the, the goodness, the love, the compassion, the understanding. And in order to really have deep compassion, love, and understanding, we kind of got to walk through uh, the fires of hell to get there. And this is what you are on right now. This is the ride that you are going through right now. This is what's, what's teaching us uh, and going to help to make us better creators in the future. We, we have to learn how powerful we are because, again, if we go back to the mythologies around the world, whether we're talking Hindu, Greek, or Chinese, they all say there is a time when humanity is like the gods themselves, very powerful beings that can do amazing, magical, miraculous things, greater things you will do. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and many of us are tapping into those things now and waking up to the possibilities and waking up to our abilities and waking up to the understanding that there's information out there to be had when you reach a certain point in your life and you take on a certain uh, practice, uh, mind, body, breath practice, you can tap into these other realms and you can have that deeper understanding. It does take work. It does take commitment. It does take um, you know, cleaning, cleaning out the temple. The temple is so, so important, meaning our bodies, because our bodies dictate the experience that we're going to have here. And, and when we hear in the Bible about the temple, this and the temple, that's your body. That's your body. Tithing is another kind of twisted theory. Tithing, you give this time to yourself. 
You don't give that energy out to anyone else. You go inward and you spend that certain percent on yourself. And this helps tie you in to the other realms to give you a deeper understanding to help you navigate the 3D. And and it, it's not an easy thing to do. And so many people, they're just not ready to to wake up to it yet. But that's that's their journey. But a lot of people are. <clears throat> So, yeah, when he's when he's talking about that spiritual side and the good and evil battle, that's very, very real inside of us. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> that <clears throat> is is partially because of our, our genetics and our DNA and what was done to humanity, because what what is Homo sapiens sapiens? What exactly is Homo sapiens sapiens? Well, Homo sapiens sapiens is the newest uh, modified version of something that was there before. And when we look back to these mythologies, whether we're talking about uh, Prometheus, you know, the titan that gave humanity fire, fire, uh, it, it, it throws off light. Fire is life in some way, so many ways. Light is knowledge and light is understanding and it is ultimately information. And so whether we're talking about these titanic forces or we're talking about, you know, again, the ancient gods, we, we keep coming back to <clears throat> these same stories that say humans were created as a hybrid species. Uh, and this is the reality. We're a modified species. We are modified, and Homo sapiens sapiens is operating on its bare minimum. It's, it's operating on the bare minimum of DNA. There has been a devolution on this planet. Devolution. We are not an evolved species that comes from monkeys, per se. No. And in fact, when we look down uh, through the different um, hominid family members, we will see others were actually more advanced than us. It, it's not that we are the most advanced. No, we, we are uh, the species that has been... We are, we are a devolution of previous branches. They have dumbed down these bodies. They have made these bodies uh, so that they are weaker than the previous versions. Uh, they are much more fallible. You're, you, you guys are familiar with the term um, planned obsolescence. Humans have planned obsolescence. Our human bodies have planned obsolescence to them. They don't want them lasting, you know, more than 120 years. It even says that in your Bible. It says, I will not strive with humans anymore. Their lifespans shall be 120 years max. And yet we had seen Methuselah 969 years and, and the patriarchs living uh, these long lives. Well, it, it's not just from the Hebrew Bible. And the Hebrew Bible is 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 just, you know, really it's, it's one of the later uh, renditions of these older stories, which all say the same thing. And when you look to the Greek legends, you know, humans live thousands and thousands of years. When you look to the Sumerian legends, we live thousands and thousands of years. Chinese, same thing. It, it's all around the globe. There are times when humans lived very, very long lives. So again, <clears throat> What have they done? Well, genetically, they've planned obsolescence in our bodies. And what are they doing right now? Well, they're, they're, in, they're on their way creating a newer species, which will even have a shorter span and will be uh, even more tied into the system, more dumbed down and less powerful uh, and less, less abilities, less ability to think and reason than we have. And those, those will be the ones that are trapped inside the cities, uh, the cell cities. That's going to be their whole existence is, is they are going to be completely plugged into the Borg. As we've shared with you guys when we were channeling the kids from the future that came through, um, they that were living outside of the cities on Earth were living lives that were many times longer than those that were living in the cities on Earth. 
And so we are going to start to, if as long as we stay free and clear of the system, outside the system, uh, we will start to live longer, healthier lives. We will have our abilities turned on. These abilities are being turned on by the sun. This is why they're spraying. This is number one reason why they do all that spraying is is to keep the light from reaching your skin and your eyes and and turning on your pineal gland which is the seat of the soul and is the key to awakening these abilities because again we have some of their dna and and us and they've looked for ways to modify out a lot of their own abilities that are latent in us and then we also have abilities from that which was here that was modified, which they've lost a long time ago. And, and it's, it, it is what connects us to the one and the all. And so they are, it's very much that um, old story in a way again, where, you know, the devil uh, and the fallen angels per se are very jealous of humans because we have something they don't. Well, they are, and we can go places they can't. But then we also have some of their uh, their essence and DNA in us. So this is the devil and angel on our shoulders, per se. Mm -hmm. Understanding who we are, that's one of their biggest, biggest fears, um, because we can go above and beyond. And I think that's um, in their horror, <laughs> they realize that they have created uh, beings that really can, if we wanted to go uh, above and beyond where they're at now the problem is is i'll call it weaknesses of the flesh you know we can be very lazy we can find ourselves in situations that um, might not be really advantageous because of the weaknesses of flesh and they do play on that i mean especially the laziness factor in our technology that we use um we were watching a show the other night i forget which one but uh somebody was looking up an address on their phone or they were looking to see where someone lived and the other character who was tapped into his and his ancestral lineage says he says you rely far too much on your media device let's let's close our eyes and let's uh what did he say uh let's use the ravens and to find it so he did he closed his eyes he tapped into the ravens he spoke to the raven and the raven went and found this person and they followed the raven to that person now if because we have all of this technology we tend to lean into that because it's easy because we don't even know that there's something different and <laughs> being human they they do they play on the laziness you know here's your fast food uh, here's this drink that tastes really good. You, you don't have to do anything to make it good. You just take it out of the fridge at the store and it tastes really good and you put it into your body and it's actually poison. You're poisoning yourselves. But there's something in it that um, they make it so that we crave this food, the foods that they've put out there for us. And unless you really go out of your way to change that, and I mean, some people really have to go out of their way. They might be a hundred miles away from a certain store where they can get organic foods. And, and that's just, to me, the cards are really stacked against some people. But my point is, is the option is out there for us to go a different direction if we so choose. And that scares them. That's why some of you who do go above and beyond might feel a little bit targeted at times because there's other beings standing in other dimensions to trip you up and to get you going in the wrong direction. That's their sole purpose. I don't want to freak anybody out, but when you understand that that's what it is and you accept that, there is no freaking out about it. It's like, oh, okay, well, I know what that is. That's this jerk standing over here trying to trip me up. And it, it's, it's really as bland and blatant as that. You know, that's how I see it now. But before, when I was going through my awakening, it was a little bit, okay, you know, it's like I don't like these little things. They're kind of everywhere. And, well, you know, higher self had decided it was time for me to see them. So I did. And this is where we're at. And now I have a deeper understanding and I'm here to help people, other people navigate it. And I'm here to help other people to understand it and um, go through it because you're not going to learn anything Mike and I put out there and I hate to even use the word teach but we do we teach from our own personal experience we are here to help other people understand it that's our whole purpose and um, we hold that very near and dear to our heart and we do the very best we can 
so that people do have a, a an understanding experience of being here in the 3D. And spirituality is not to separate you from the 3D. It's absolutely not to bring us anywhere other than the 3D. It's to help us understand the 3D. So I just wanted to get that across. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was going to show you guys like this one here. Um, this is one we made out in the desert. This was very close to where we were living. And, uh, you know, at a minute <clears throat> and five seconds, if you slow it down very, uh, you can see we got the little reptilian humanoid. And there's my boy ZB. Uh, Zeke was, is with us. You know, he's he lies on the bed at night, even though he's, he's not physical anymore. This is the thing. You know, Cindy can see him. I've had glimpses of him, too. Uh, he, he died, um, gosh, it was two years ago. It was two years ago. He, he passed on and we got Rama and Sita. My God, time flies. Absolutely flies as I'm trying to catch this. Hang on a second here. Um, at one minute and five seconds, let's go to one minute and four seconds. And you really have to, but really none of it's paranormal. Okay, see, it went pie already here. Yeah, I guess flip this down to one quarter. We, we've had so many ex experiences. Um, we've seen beings uh, numerous times that are extraterrestrial. <laughs> seen with the third eye, sometimes uh, glimpses with uh, the physical eyes as well. And this Zeke took us up to this hill and wanted us to be here for some reason. And it's interesting. It's right when I'm saying these are th not paranormal things. Watch over in this area because it comes right through here. This is a drone. This is a reptilian drone. There it goes. So you can see it right there. It's saucer shaped. And uh, it's a reptilian drone. I mean, we I've caught dozens and dozens of these things uh, throughout the years. Uh, I mean, we I, I can't count how many uh, interactions we've had. And we've seen things like we've seen uh, not far from here. Um, those metal, I, I, they're like metal feet marks of something that's really large that's that's it's embedded in stone it it's not from anything that people made this go round it, it's definitely left over there you go so there's you know i mean it comes from behind here and goes shooting through um you know we've had so many <clears throat> interactions when we speak we're, we're not speaking from mostly conjecture it it's really our firsthand experiences and what we've gotten firsthand that we're sharing and you know this this is what we want to uh share with you guys and uh you know we, we've shared pictures of what we believe is uh, a jinn as well with you and you know they're, they are real yes there are demonic entities uh absolutely there's demonic entities and there are angels but then there's also extraterrestrials and um there's also inner earth beings and you know in fact humanity itself doesn't originate on the earth and the the earth is um you know basically a remnant of Tiamat that was destroyed in this war. Uh, I really think this is one of the better ones to go through. The dark power structure, the Anunnaki, Draco, Jinn, how they feed on humanity, thought forms. And uh, we've done so many uh, videos on all these things. The galactic interdimensional pirates that have controlled Earth for thousands of years. When the Anunnaki divided the nations, that's Deuteronomy 32.8. That's Psalm 82. It, it's a reference to the same myths that we get from the Greeks and we get from uh, the Chinese and the Sumerians. And, and it goes on and on. The, all these legends piece together. All these myths piece together. Um, so, you know, uh, what's going on right now? Well, you know, the power structure is going to roll out a new version. And it's going to be more of a Borg type of version. 
They've even told us. They've said this is the last generation of Homo sapiens. You know, maybe there'll be some leftovers. <clears throat> but what they don't tell you is if they were not here, Homo sapiens would be, be turning into something much more like Homo superior. We would be blossoming into what we were in past ages. And again, even if the Anunnaki or those that we term Anunnaki uh, are the ones that have modified this body, it's just a body. It's a vehicle. We shed the body, we move on. And, you know, that's another um, topic that is so twisted and distorted, the, the concept of a resurrection from one of these bodies. We've had hundreds of bodies, thousands of bodies. We, you know, you don't go back and put on uh, a worn out, you know, falling apart piece of clothing that can't even stay on your body anymore. It's, it's gotten to the point where it's tattered and unusable. <clears throat> well, the whole concept of a resurrection of that body is, is just a distortion of the normal way of things. It, 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 it's not what we're looking forward to. You're not looking forward to a resurrection we reincarnate, we transmigrate. Transmigrate is actually, you know, much more accurate because we're not always humans. You're having a temporary human experience right now. The, the reality is we are eternal consciousness. We already are eternal, so you don't need a gift of salvation. You know, these are all the controller's theories. And this is what they have sold us. And so this video has gone long and we'll be doing uh, what I was going to include in this one in <laughs> videos after this. Um, because, again, we want to show where there's so many bits of information out there that you just, you know, you put it all together. It, it's a very clear picture that, that's here. Some details are very, very uh, obscured. But, you know, it's all done purposely because, again, we are a species with amnesia, and that's purposeful. A big part of our mission is to help people remember who they are. That's the most important thing. And when we get this information, we don't gather it from other sources. We go within, and we read the energy, and we bring the information back in hopes to wake up others so that they can remember who they are and choose their path, have a really conscious decision to make and not make one that when they're asleep they're just simply following and stumbling around with with whatever the mainstream has to tell them to do i don't i like to see people make choices if if as long as they know that there is a choice and there is yes so we look forward to your comments please share thoughts feelings what you've experienced anybody out there that wants to just put it out there what you've experienced firsthand you know feel free to share that as well um, there, there's stuff that we, we haven't totally shared because it, we've been told it's not totally safe to share. So we can't really share. Uh, and that's from a personal um, nature. But we have shared everything we can share with you. Uh, and we'll keep doing so and keep reiterating as we um, gain more knowledge and understanding with the clarity, uh, especially when it comes to the times. Because there's something so weird uh, uh, about the... the put piecing together this cycle that we are in um and it's become very apparent to me that even uh certain things uh within the cycle of the yuga are extremely pliable and uh, we'll get into that in the future as well again thank you guys for your support on patreon and ko-fi much love we appreciate you guys and look forward to your comments source bless and namaste namaste <laughs>